Mm-hmm. All right now. Oh yeah. What's going on, party people? <laughs> yeah. If I had time, I would have set up some um, the lights be a little low light situation. So how y'all like the music? Uh, something a little different tonight. to do today to get prepared for tonight I did not have time to do it at all I mean there was so much I wanted to do to get pumped up and, and do some things and I, I didn't have time to do nothing um, so I just I'm just flowing with it okay <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you I'm just flowing with it flowing with it and we'll see what happens and everything but So, um, so yeah, so let me just show y'all real quick and all right, let's see here. So all right, so this year, um, basically Adobe you know, this is where I get a lot of my pictures and stuff from. This is my library. But um, Adobe has, and if you have the, the full version of Adobe, they got all kind of music and stuff. Um, all of these. Now, some of these here you might have to pay for and everything. Um, or maybe upgrade. Oh, this might be for free. Oh, snap. So they got all these different music clips. And you just sit there. What's going on, Ack Apprentice? And um and just find something you like. You know, they got short clips, they got long clips. And this is the part of the Adobe stock. And I think I pay like 29 bucks a month for it. And um, and honestly, I didn't even realize that I had um I even had access to this. I was just searching and it was like Adobe stock. And I was like, well, okay, well, I get the um, trial version. It's like, you already got the plan. <laughs> so I was like, bet. You know, so anything that you're looking for, you can select the mood, um, whatever you want, the different genres, you know. Um, I'm gonna have to try this one, this background ambient and stuff, to see how that sounds. Now, just so y'all know, I'm gonna be talking a little low tonight because Mrs. G, she's sleep, and my my recording, where I do my recording, is across the hall um, from my bedroom. So I don't want to talk too loud and end up disturbing her. So if I sound a little low, just turn the volume up and everything. But I'm make sure that I'm not talking too too loud <clears throat> and everything. So to disturb wife <clears throat> all right let people slide on in here so tell me y'all talk to me in the chat tell me how y'all we been how things have been going on for y'all so what things look like and what y'all been doing how it's finding to been for y'all um matter of fact I haven't even looked to see what how things have been going for me This year is the first couple of days of the month. Here's from the first. I had one open. I did a witness thing. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. Well, I might have between the first and Saturday, the first four days, I'm looking at about 11, maybe 12. Um, and the reason why I said <clears throat> maybe 12 is because I have a 9 a.m. loan application to do tomorrow. And I haven't heard back from the guy. Um, so I got a 10 o'clock closing and then a 12 o'clock. So 
those two make 11 for the first four days, which is good for me. I mean, that is real good. Now for the week, getting all the way back to um, October, you're talking about 11, 12, 13, 14, or 14 for the week. <clears throat> and that's not bad. You know, I, um, so, but for the first four days, 11, so let me go and take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, I can work with that. I, I, I can honestly work with that. So it's that, um, got a long, got a long half the day, but the same day at 2, then got switched to Sunday at 1, then got switched back to the day at 6.30. Then back to Monday at 3 p.m. <laughs> now, I'll give y'all a now. This is real interesting. Here's what's going on with the loan application and everything. And let me know if the music's too loud. I can. I'm gonna turn it off in a little bit. But let me know if it's too loud for y'all. But here's the thing that's going on um, with the loan application when a person actually. Um, when they actually are, are trying to apply for a loan, and I did this about a year ago just to see what would happen, I submitted a request, and I'm talking about as soon as I hit the button, give me out, as soon as I hit the button to send the request in, I immediately got like five phone calls from five different loan offers, as well as text messages. I was getting phone calls and text messages, and that would last for like three days. And they are inundating people. So look there, and, and this has happened several times with me. I'm at the close, I'm not at the close, but I'm at the loan application appointment. And while I'm there doing loan application with Fred or John and Jane, they're getting phone calls from other loan officers saying, we can give you a better deal. And then sometimes, most of the times they stick with what they're doing, but a few times they're like, okay, well, let me hear you out. And now all of a sudden I got to call the current loan off people and be like, hey, they don't want to do this now because somebody just called them and now they want to all stop. They want to stop everything. And they're like, oh, no, no. So then they want to get on the phone. They want to talk to them, try to figure this bad boy out. Um, and what can be happening is your two o'clock could have got told, you know, could have decided, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm too busy. Let's do it on Sunday. Or they might have said, well, let me look at somebody else, but we'll keep making it on Sunday. And they're getting all of these offers to get to apply for these loans with these other people. And folk are trying to, you know, ask them. Now, and again, that's one, one scenario. The other scenario is that <laughs> The person who's applying for the loan, they're not pressed. They really aren't pressed to do it. it you know, they're like, nah, I might, I might not. And they might have said, hey, hey, can you be? Now, they might, here's what can happen sometimes. As soon as the person says, yes, I'm interested, sometimes they don't tell them that they're going to send somebody out. So you get the notification. They say, yeah, we do that too. You call them. And they're like, ah, okay, I'll meet you at two. But then something comes up. The, the, you know, maybe their spouse is like, hey, let's go out for a date night. Or maybe, you know, that special someone else, if they're not married, call them or whatever. The kids. And they're like, hey. Or they might get the chance to work some extra overtime. And they're like, you know what? I don't want to do it today. Can we do it Sunday? All right, cool. We'll do it Sunday. Then it's like, well, you know what? I, 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 I pissed off my little lady. <laughs> Or my little dude, and now nah, I'm free. Well, you know what? Now nah, I can't do it. Let's do it on my. It could be a variety of reasons. All we can do is just be flexible enough to meet the demand. And I love the loan application because if there's somebody applying for a loan, there's a chance that they'll get approved for it. And there's a deal that can be done. Hopefully, it'll be you that'll get picked for it. If not, at least there's a deal on the table that somebody can get picked up. And that's, <clears throat> and that's causing some um, positive 
money coming through in our business. And then my man Karina said, um, he knocked out four this week. All right, cool. Yeah. And I know with him working full time, that's probably good, you know, good middle of the road for him. I could see him easily knocking out seven to ten a week, um, depending on his schedule and stuff. And then it said, ah, that makes sense. When I called to confirm with the sign, she said she never seen anything like it. Her phone's been ringing off the hook since she submitted her info and pretty right. And a lot of people are like, you know what? I'm just, I don't, I don't want it. Never mind. And then what they do, here's the biggest issue. They submit to them sometimes by email, a loan estimate. And they will say, well, here's the numbers. That loan estimate, and sometimes the loan officer may not talk about this to them. That loan estimate does, you know, will show fifteen thousand dollars to do a point buy down, where they're purchase, they're paying to have the points lowered, and they're like, nobody told me this. Nobody told me I'm going to be paying fifteen thousand dollars to get my points lowered. So if that's the case, <laughs> the person is like. Uh, I ain't really, I ain't really feeling that, you know. So that could be another issue, and then they have to go off, or it could be in reverse where they told them, basically, um, you don't, you know, the interest rate is real high, and they're like, well, I thought I wanted it lower. They're like, well, you're going to have to pay some points to get it lower, and now that person got to pay points. And then when they see what they have to pay in point, they're not feeling that too much. So, um, let me see here. Let me see if I can show y'all. So, what I'm talking about here. So as y'all see here, one percent loan amount for one percent points at three thousand six hundred dollars. So that's to get one percent drop in their interest rate. You get one percent drop in their interest rate. They had to pay three thousand sixty dollars. There's some people that are getting three points off. So you're talking about nine thousand dollars in some cases and that's a lot of money to put and that's on top of it and this is where the closing cost comes in so with the closing costs that includes the one percent and then here's the money that's coming back to them and this person was on uh, refinancing to pay off some debt and to get do a cash out and everything you know so that's what they was doing um so and their interest rate, and here's what their interest rate is. So they pay 1% and their interest rate still is 7%. To get it dropped down 1%. So what's happening, if you're seeing a five or six percent, more than likely if you look at the second page of the closing disclosure, at the top line, you're going to see the points, and I guarantee you, you're going to see like maybe 12 to 15 grand in points because that's what's happening. They're taking, they're, they're dropping it that much um, in order to get a little more interest rate. Okay, and right now, if you have great credit, your interest rate is still going to be about eight percent in most cases. And so, hey, what's going on, Jeff? Good to see you there. Acme Notary. One of the coolest dudes out there in California. Pop locking it all day, every day. Yeah, so, so if anybody got any questions, any concerns, any thoughts, ideas, um, something that they've been dealing with, um, I'm just letting people roll in. We're gonna get started and talk about some stuff um and everything. So I'm just looking to see if I can find something else for y'all, show y'all. What I mean by those points. So feel free to ask any questions or 
talk about anything that you've gone through. So, what you got, Jeff? What's your question, my man? What is your question? Now, let me show y'all this. Also, while he's typing this question in. So y'all see this one. They got a 3% and they're only paying 37,000. I mean, 3,700, which is good. And then, and, I, and this is a fee loan. So their stuff might be a little different. Then they got a loan origination fee of a thousand. But then here's the kicker down here. That VA funding fee, depending on the price of the house, that VA funding fee can be a, a, a butt kicker. Okay, now right here, notary fee, eighty dollars. <laughs> um, I don't even know who this American settlement is, but that's a notary fee. I don't know if that's a notary fee. To them. I don't even know. I don't even know how much I got paid for this, one. but. Funding fee. So, and this is a um, a no, you know, this is a no, not negotiable thing. The VA because they're backing the loan offer the funding fee that they have to pay, and it's typically and it's a certain percentage of the loan and all of that. So some of the discounts that people, the um, the lender can do to cut this, they can say we'll do, you know, our origination fee. We'll cut that fee and everything, you know. So these are some of the main fees that these folks have. And that's what they're looking at. And when they start seeing these fees, you know, these fees, um, they, they didn't shop around for, you know, all of that. And then closing costs, 13,000. So you're paying 13,000 to get nine grand coming back to you. For some people, that's a good deal. For some people, that is not a good deal. You know, um, and I don't know what they were getting. Yeah, and they were getting. Um, does it show here? They was getting ooh, a good little bit. They was getting what thirteen thousand. Uh, let me get to your question in a sec. Three thousand plus twenty four hundred plus twenty three hundred. another 3000 so they were getting $23,000 of debt paid off and their mortgage the mortgage that they have left on the house was only 77,000 at that point so 77,000 at that at this point of this year and they went up to 123 so yeah, so, and then their interest rate was 7.99. So let me show y'all real quick. The property appraised at 155. They were, let me see something. What, 123. Yeah, so, so somewhere along the line, all together between the money they was pulling out plus the money they're getting back plus the fees forty six thousand dollars so that increased their loan from seventy seven thousand that's what they had left to pay off to one hundred and twenty three thousand so now they have to say am i okay with that at seven point nine nine percent so they got three point percentage points dropped off of this from my um paying nine hundred and nine 12 and then with insurance 12 14 and 13,000 in closing costs plus the 9,000 and then the other money that they're pulling out you know so you so they're, they're kicking out some money um so you talking about 46,000 so you know this is where it's at. So I said, what about twenty some thousand? 
and that plus the 13,000 plus the nine, let me just say 9,500. Yeah, so 42 ish. So all of that is what, how they come up with bumping, bumping the price up. So that's where it's at. So do I do mentorship? Yes. And it starts with you watching the videos here on this channel. I have a um, channel membership. If you click the join button, that's how I do my mentorship. All right. And then it says, Griff, I was watching another Notary channel the other day. It's definitely true that everyone is trying to sell a class. That's the game, man. These people, they're not willing to go out here and work it. They, they, look, a lot of people who I talk to, men and women alike, black, white, young, old, a lot of people don't have the desire or willingness to go out there and do 70 signings a month, even if it is possible in their area. They're like, I don't want to do all that. I they don't want to, they don't want to do all the ripping and running. People tell me all the time they don't want to do all the printing. They don't, it's just too much for them. They just want to, they want it easy. And I get that. I've talked to multiple people, talked to somebody today, talked to somebody like two or three other people this week that were all saying the same thing. They just want it a little bit easier and all of the ripping and running. And for some people, they're like, okay, let me just sell a class on something. And I'll be honest, sometimes people actually listen to what I talk about on here and then try to turn that into selling a class to y'all. So if you hear me talk about it and then you see somebody else selling a class on it, you know where they got it from. <laughs> you know where they got it from. But um, before it's mentorship, click the join button and that's where it starts set. Okay, so I did a loan and the guy wants to pay me, but once the loan docks back, that I can't have him cancel the loan anyway, it's a HELOC. He wants the loan docks back. He, he wants to, you did a loan and the guy wants to pay you, but he wants the loan docks back, that I can't, I guess, did he, I'm trying to figure that one out there. <laughs> so did the guy, did this come through a, a direct client or a signing company that said, go do this HELOC? Well, normally, of course, you know, if it's through a signing company, they paid you. The signing company is the one paying you. But if he came to you direct, which that can happen, meaning the um, company had him, gave him the documents and then he, you know, um, paid, for, paid the notary fee and everything. He said he signed but doesn't want to go through with it now. You know, do, with the loan. Well, with the HELOCs, they have um, three day right to cancel. They do. I have seen that. I have not seen a, a HELOC that did not have um, a right to cancel. So he just, now if he's passed the right to cancel phase, then he ended the winning. Ain't too much it can be done. But if he's not past it, then he should be able to just um, submit that and be done with it. You know, but there's nothing you can do in trying to give you give him the documents back. That violates what you are supposed to do for your direct client. So you can't just give him the documents back because he wants to pay you and everything. But they're going to be on you, as you know, like, yo, where the doc's at? And he'd be like, well, he paid me to give it back to him because he don't want to do it. Will that stop everything from happening? Yes, but he's going to be in a buttload of trouble and they probably can sue him and of course it was to you um, for that. So um, I wouldn't, yeah, you would have to cancel the loan with the, with the lender like you asked him. Yeah, he would have to cancel the loan. He'd have to call them and, and all of that. This is, you know, people think we're the, you know, mm -hmm. Put it on us. Nope, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess with that. And hello to you, Lona. Good to see you. All right. So, as y'all saw, my topic is: Are you overthinking this business? Are you overthinking? Um. Let me put this over here. 
So as the graphic says, basically overthinking, underperforming. And to me, they are synonymous because overthinking can cause you to underperform and you're underperforming sometimes because you're overthinking. Now, in the chat, how many people feel that they are overthinking? If you think you're overthinking, put a one in the chat. If you have, you're not overthinking, you gotta put anything. But if you're overthinking, put a one. If you feel you're underperforming, put a two. If you feel you got a combination of both of those, put a three. So if you're overthinking, put a one in the chat. If you're underperforming, put a two. If you feel you're you're doing a combination of the two, overthinking and underperforming, put a three in the chat. Um, And be honest, and nobody's going to come after you and all this, that, and the other. But my take has been, and let me know if y'all think the same, because I could be wrong. But part of the reason why most people are overthinking this business is out of fear. And the reason why you, you're fearful is because you somewhere along the line got some information that made you fearful. There's some information that came across to you that made you feel like, hmm, I'm not confident in what I'm supposed to be doing or how to do um, this business. So if you're a little iffy, yeah, one, if you are overthinking, two, if you are underperforming, and three, if you feel you're doing both. <laughs> I forgot the number, but I'm definitely in a decent spot. Although I want to continue to do better. Yeah, now I already knew Apprentice, he probably went through this a while back, but he's at the point now where he's he's solid. He knows what he's doing, where he's going, um, and has dealt with the overthinking and the underperforming and all of that, you know, so that's that's good. Hey, good evening to you, Dreams. Good evening to you. So I guess nobody has been overthinking, underperforming, or both. But I don't see any ones, twos, or threes. So that means, and now here's the thing. If you are not doing any of that, and don't be afraid to, to mention, because a lot of people are like, I don't want nobody. Look, if you are, you are. Okay? You are, you are. But if you're not, then what's the reason for you not doing what you need to be doing in the business? What is the reason? Why aren't you moving forward in the business? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because the majority of the people who contact me say that they are overthinking in this business. They're saying I'm overthinking because they're trying to plan out every scenario that could possibly happen so that they don't have failure whatsoever. And they're trying to find a way to be perfect. It says, Tracy says, <clears throat> I overthink when I get the job. When I get a job I've never done <laughs> since 2020 and still getting nervous sometimes. It's nothing wrong with getting nervous. Being nervous, thinking about, okay, because each job can be nerve wracking depending on who you're dealing with. But as I always say, when it comes to a job that you've never done, if it's dealing with a mortgage, a deed, um, if it's a you know refinance, HELOC, um, reverse mortgage, um, loan modification, purchase sale, one thing you know in all of those that I just named, you got to notarize something. So the question then becomes, what is it about the order that makes you nervous? What is it that makes you overthink because you've never done it before? Because we all know one thing, depending on your state, if you're in a state where you're not supposed to do or don't have to do any document explaining, although 90%, over 90% of the people out here in this business says you need to explain the documents, but if you go by what your 
state says and your state tells you you don't have to, then the only thing you need to do is look for where they sign a initial where you have to do the notarization. And that's for the most part it. So like one was a commercial loan, a relocation package, never done a loan application ever. Loan applications are the easiest because all you're doing is having them sign the loan application. There's nothing to notarize in it whatsoever and you'll collect. And in most cases, you'll just collect um, financial information like W-2, Social Security, retirement, ED-214, things of that nature, tax paperwork and all of that. So you'll use a scan app, take pictures of that, or if you have a portable scanner, run it through and you're good to go. Okay. Um, a relocation package. Um, I've heard it happen. I don't think I've ever done one. Um, and I'm sure I'm, a relocation package. I'm not sure what that would in hell um, for the relocation package. Um, commercial loan. Those are fairly simple. Um, the main thing you have to do is just, I actually tell people, look through every single page, make sure that you see whether or not there's something that needs to be initial. Because when you get to the deed and the note and the agreement, there are pages in there that sometimes they may need to initial in the middle, you know, not at the bottom, but like in the middle of the document. So, you know, if this is your agreement, of times in the middle or off to the side depending on who's doing the loan we have them initial saying that they read that or they're you know read it or aware of it so you can't it's not like a normal deed where you just flip through and like okay go to the signature page or the initial spot is going to always be in the lower right with commercial loans you can have multiple pages that require them to initial can have them be, they can be signing two and three times, sometimes twice, when as the business owner and then another as individual. So it would be Earl Jones, energy member of Earl Jones Enterprise, and then just as Earl Jones. Um, it will typically let you know if they need to put anything behind their signature, like Earl Jones member or managing member. If they don't, Tell you then you don't have to worry about putting that on there um and just watch and be careful of what they're saying and you're good to go you're, you really are good to go um so that's pretty much it for commercial loans relocation package i'm not familiar with those i've heard of them but i'm i'm pretty confident i've never done one before um but for a lot of people, and a lot of people don't want to admit that they're overthinking. And thank y'all for hitting the like button. Yeah, make sure y'all hit the like button and everything. I really appreciate that. That lets people know we're out here chopping it up. But with the overthinking, here's how I how I manage my overthinking issues, and not just with the notary business, but with everything. Why am I overthinking? What is it that I'm concerned about? What I'm, is, is there something that I'm fearful of? Something that I'm really, really concerned about? And is it valid? Or am I trying to plan for every scenario because I'm afraid to fail? And what is it that I, I'm going to fail at? And why would I fail? So these are things that I ask myself. I'm like, okay, what am I going to fail at? What would be considered a failure? Why did I fail? And if I do fail, what is the consequence from that failure? What happens if I fail? Do I just give up and quit? Am I going to jail? Is the business going to be taken away? What is the repercussions of me failing? Now, once I understand all of that, the next step is what plan can I put in place not to fail? How do I avoid failure? What is it that I need to have in my life or my business life? And what do I need to take out of my business life in order 
not to fail? Is there anything that I can do to recognize the signs of an impending failure scenario? What is it that I need to watch out for? And if I understand those things, then I can do what? Be able to mitigate my failure, which means what? Now I'm not underperforming. That's how you stop underperforming by doing what? Sitting there and making sure. Hold on one second. I'm trying to do something. Okay. So that is the kicker. How do I ensure that I'm not underperforming is by identifying why am I overthinking it. And a lot of times what I'm finding out with the notary business, a lot of people are overthinking this business. It's because of what they've heard other people say about the business. And if you hear people saying things about the business from a doom and gloom, it's going to get you perspective. I really think we have an obligation for ourselves and our business and even for our family, because listening to certain people out there can affect our business, which affects our family. We have an obligation to inquire and ask them, why? What is What are you talking about? Why is it that bad? How is it that, okay, if I do this business, I'm going to instantly get put in jail? Matter of fact, why would you tell me to join into a business that there's a high probability that I'm going to jail? Why would I want to do a business where there's a high probability that I'm going to jail? See, this is the part that doesn't make sense to me. When I sit back and I listen to what people share with me, I'm like, well, if that, is, if that is the case, then we don't need to do this business. We need to be staying away. But then everybody's saying run to it. Everybody's saying stay in it. Everybody's saying there's all this money to be made, but there's a high possibility you're going to go to jail. Now, have anybody heard that before? If you heard that before, put a one in the chat. But I know I have. And I'm like, how am I supposed to make it in life? How am I supposed to take care of my family? If every time I get an order, there's a chance of me going to jail. So again, it goes back to how do you mitigate? How do you focus and say, okay, let me find a way not to go to jail. But then the question is, what is it that I could possibly do that could cause me to go to jail? Because if I don't know what I'm doing, what I can do to put, get put in jail, then how do I stop? How do I put myself in a position not to go to jail? That's the key. So for me, I had to start questioning what people said. And sometimes you can't question them directly, but you can question them within yourself and say, hmm, I don't know if that's good, right or not. Or let me find out if that's right. Let me investigate. Let me look into this because I hear what they're saying but it seems like they're double talking. And as I started researching, inquiring, asking questions, I started finding out that some of the stuff they're saying is not true. And the stuff that is true only comes every now and then, but it's easily dealt with, with the right focus. So if I got the right focus and I understand what I'm supposed to be doing, like they always say, well, you know, you don't want to notarize something, you know, something illegal. You don't want to, you know, they might be stealing somebody's property. Okay, well, then let me pay attention to what's going on in this scenario. Let me call and ask for help from the title company or the signing company. That's how I deal with that. Everybody say, well, you can't, you can't um, notarize a blank page. Okay, well, what do you mean blank page? Define blank page. Not saying that you're supposed to notarize a bank blank page, but people keep saying that. So what is defined as a blank page? That's the question that I always have. What do you mean blank? Because there's sometimes there's fields on there that the title company fills out and the person who's reading it, they're reading and saying, okay, I agree to the terms and conditions. I understand this but they know that the title company is going to fill out these here areas because that's their responsibility. 
are you saying that they can't sign that and you notarize the signature on that because that area is not filled out? If that's the case, then now you need to do what? Call the title company and find out, hey, <clears throat> is it okay if I if they don't fill this out or do you need this filled out now? It takes a phone call. So now you found out that this document can be notarized with those areas not filled out. But we say, well, no, I took training from so-and-so and they said, I can't do it. I called the NNA and they said, no, you can't do it. Okay. Again, as I always say, the NNA and your trainer are not paying you to do that job. So let me talk to the person who is paying me. Now you have a decision to make. Do I listen to what the NNA said or do I listen to the person who's paying me? And if the person who's paying me can articulate and show me how it is OK for me to do this and I can have them sign this document and these areas be left blank because the title company is going to fill it out. Well, one of the things that I can do is make note of that in my logbook that I called and talked to so-and-so and they said this page is going to be filled out. You won't have to put that in your closeout report to the signing company, but you can put that in your logbook and make note of that. But if you're somebody saying you can't notarize certain types of documents, then give me evidence and some legal background to say, okay, I don't. Because many notaries have gotten into orders and they're like, I ain't notarizing that. Why? Well, it's not filled out and it needs to be filled out. And if you don't fill it out, I ain't, I'm not. And that, and they never call the signing company. They never call the, the uh, title company. And then they don't. And even if the signers sign it, they won't put that. They won't do the notarization on it because something on there is left blank. And they never investigate why it was left blank or should it be left blank? Is it OK for it to be left blank? And that becomes from that overthinking because of what you've been told by somebody else. And you never question them to find out. Is there some other clarification behind what they're saying? And when I started doing that, things opened up for me. I had a better understanding. I understood what the signing company wanted. I understood what the lender wanted. I understood what the title company wanted. And then I was able to actually execute my role as a notary with a clear conscience. And now I'm overperforming rather than underperforming. I think my problem is trying to know what documents to notarize and we'll have enough time to get the documents sorted and prepared for the client. OK. The documents you need to notarize are the ones that have a notarial certificate to them. One of the problems I'm also hearing is that a lot of notaries are thinking that every time somebody signs, do I put a notarial certificate to this with the loan closing? OK. Loan closing documents, they typically have the notarial certificate on the document. So if you watch my videos, like the loan closing um, document, the loan closing overview, and the one that says um, the brief um, overview of understanding acknowledgments, you will see the, loan, the actual acknowledgments or the jurat or acknowledgement on the document. So that's the document that they want a notarization for and everything. It says, she says, I hear people say, don't worry about just do it. Then the company wants you to, you know, then the company wants you to know. So I don't know. <laughs> well, well, any document, if you've seen a document and it's like the deed or mortgage, Anything that says affidavit typically is notarized. Every now and then you'll see an affidavit and they don't want it notarized. But most of the time, there's a notarial certificate. So from a loan closing mortgage standpoint, if the document that's in front of you has a notarial certificate, then it wants it done. If you're confused when you see a document that doesn't have a notarial certificate that they sign, like the borrower's consent to use tax return. There's no notarial certificate on that. It's just them signing it and that's it. 
And then the question becomes, well, why do you think it needs to be notarized? And most people are like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. This is where the, the, the our ability to process and understand the flow of things. This is um. Oh, it will reset on its own. When you put in a new toner, there's a little device on the looking from the back on the left hand side. That it's a switch that flips and um and resets. Um, the drum, they got instructions in the packet. The drum you have to manually reset. So on the on the 62, 64, 5200, anything, brother, you have to manually reset the drum. The toner will reset. It's a little device on the side. So when you put it in, it clicks and it resets it to say, okay, this is a full toner. The drum is the one that you have to manually reset. And a lot of people don't do that. They don't do that whatsoever because you think it's going to happen. So in other words, you have a new drum and when you put it in, it was at 5%. Next thing you know, it's saying yeah, your drum is dead. And you're like, I just bought that. So then you go buy another one. It runs for a little bit. And then it says it's dead because you never reset it. So you got to reset the drum. If you don't reset the drum. So, um, so yeah. So when it comes to notarizing documents, it's the document that they have an authorial certificate on. If you're dealing with general notary work, non-mortgage related work, they typically, if they say, well, my boss says this document needs to be notarized. That's what they'll say. And then you just add a certificate to that document. And of course you will ask them and say, well, what type of certificate do they want? Do they want an acknowledgement? Explain what an acknowledgement means. And, or do they want a jurat? And you explain what a jurat, you know, means and the purpose and the reason why a jurat is used versus an acknowledgement. Then from there, they just say, okay, well, based off of what you said, I want this one. And then you use that one. Um, but if you're looking in, in, and I'm learning that there are people out there who actually think every single document in the loan packet is supposed to get notarized. And that's not the case. And I'm sure there's some people who have done that which is the reason why it's taking them three hours to do a closing because they're trying to affix a notarial certificate to everything. Now the question is, why didn't anybody ever say that you don't have to notarize every single document? Because they think that we're supposed, where well, they feel that we should be mature enough and intelligent enough to understand that if you see a notarial certificate, then you do your thing. If you don't see it, then you don't do your thing. But because of all of this here conflicting information, it confuses you and you're like, well, I think I need to do that and stuff. And he said, what's weird is that my last tone I had ran out of ink, wouldn't print, which I thought was premature. Was it um, off brand or was it a brother brand? Because I've been uh, some people will have that problem with the off brand um, with the off brand ones. They actually will um, sometimes not fill them all the way up, I've heard, with the off-brand ones, the refurbished ones. Um, they won't automatically fill them all the way up. Okay, then unless it's a bad batch or something, I found a video show how to reset the actual, and I found a video where someone showed how to reset the actual toner. And it's worked, however, and it's worked ever since. I didn't know you could manually reset it. I'm going to have to look at that up myself. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. Um, now, you asked me how to scale a notary business. To me, the first thing you need to do, and I will tell you, like Bill Soroka said, nail it before you scale it. Nail it before you scale it nail it before you scale it meaning get good at it before you start trying to scale into something else 
too many notaries are not good at being a notary and they're trying to scale the business. No sooner than they get in, it's like, okay, I'm gonna scale it. My question would be, and please respond, what are you trying to scale it into? That's the big question. What is it that you're trying to scale it into? So if you're doing loan closings, what are you trying to scale it into? Where do you what are you trying to add on to it? Okay, man, appreciate you getting me the link. That's the question. What do you plan on scaling it into? Because sometimes people tend to scale things so they can stop doing something else. I'm doing loan closings while well, I'm a scale into doing a loan a, a signing company. But what you don't realize is that there's a ton of signing companies out here. So at some point in time, and really it's not even some point, it's now there's an oversaturation of signing companies. Now, if it's all about a signing company, I'm just, just using this as an example with you. Well, somebody got to do the closings. And what you have here is about 30% of the people who come in this business within three to four months are trying to be signing company owners or educators. And you have to ask yourself why, why is it that so many people are switching from being a notary and in less than six months, boom, you see what I'm saying? Now you're saying you want to provide jobs for 10 to 15 people. Why? Is it because you don't want to do the work? And I'm just, I mean, this is a legitimate question. And this is a question that your bank would ask you or whoever is like, okay, why do you want to? Okay. So the question now is, let's go back a step. How long have you been doing notary work? If you, if you're a notary, how long have you been doing notary work? How long have you been doing loan closing? How many have you done? That's the that's the question. And please be honest with this, okay? I you know I don't have no way to verify, but I have to ask and everything. Um, but that's what you have, you know, because if you don't, because when you start talking about providing jobs for other people, if the people who you're working for are just regular people and they don't understand this industry, you're going to have problems because if they don't understand the industry, they're not going to understand what notaries are saying to them. And it's going to be a conflict and apprentice and many others in here can actually attest to that, that there are issues when it comes to signing company employees, not understanding what notaries actually supposed to be doing. And why we're saying we can't notarize something or we need certain types of ID or this, that, or the other. So, Jane, I just want to provide jobs for 10 to 15 people. You know, so that's not like what you're trying to do a signing company. And having a signing company is hard because you have to deal with notaries not necessarily doing the work. And complaining about the pay because if you and depending on how much long how long you've been doing this, if you feel that you're not getting paid adequately as a signing agent, now the question becomes, what are you going to do to ensure that the people you hire for your signing company are getting paid the way you wanted to get paid? So if you felt that you needed to get paid one hundred and fifty dollars for each closing that you do. What are you doing to ensure that you can pay them 150? Because in my opinion, if you want 150, but you start a signing company and you're only paying them 75, to me that's disingenuous. That's why I did that video a while back called making $30,000 a month off of a $75 signing. Because there are a lot of signing company owners who used to make a hundred, maybe one twenty-five, and then they became a signing company owner. They felt they needed to get paid more, but they're on average getting seventy-five dollars for each signing. However, seventy-five times four hundred closings a month—that's thirty thousand dollars. So, you see what I'm saying? So to get thirty thousand, that's how you can get it. 
by starting a signing company. You you funnel out 400 signings a month at one you get paid 150, you give the notary 75, you keep 75, you at thirty thousand dollars that you made. You brought in 60, but you paid out 30 and you kept 30. I think that's a pretty good deal. So, you know, when you say provide jobs, it's like what types of jobs are you looking at providing people? And if it has anything to do with loan closings, how are you going to negotiate to get notaries paid more than $65? And as a side note, <laughs> the most hated videos that I've that I the, the videos I get the most hate on is anything where I'm talking about doing a signing under a hundred dollars. I get so many dislikes on those videos, it ain't funny. People hate it when I talk about that. But if your signing company owner does not have the ability to negotiate a higher fee for themselves so they can pay you higher then what are you going to do? So if you're going to do this clout, nothing wrong with it, but you can't be like everybody else. You can't just like, okay, I'm going to start it so I can pay, so I can have 10 to 15 people working for me. And a lot of people are really hyped up and really big on this. I want people to work for me and people get off on that. Not saying you, but there are a lot of people who are getting off on. I want people, I want somebody to work for me. And they feel that that is cool. But the question then becomes, are you a good employer? Do you care about the people? Are you going to be there for them? Are you going to really run your business to where you can give them consistent raises? All of this is a factor. So are you paying a signing company? I mean, are you paying the notaries who are doing work for you a good salary or a good fee? And are you paying your employees? decently or are you bringing in all the money and you worrying about running to Aruba every other weekend because that is something that has happened and is happening within this here industry people get all this money coming in thirty thousand dollars a month they think it's gonna last forever so now they're out here buying houses and doing real estate investing and all that kind of stuff and they ain't taking care of the business <laughs> and then next thing you know their employees like okay every time we turn around you go into another conference you're going and it ain't got nothing to do with notary you're going to another real estate conference or crypto conference and all this that and the other i'm telling you that kind of stuff is going on so my lady here said i found out my w-2 job is being acquired by another company and the majority of the staff are not being transferred to the new company i've been notarizing for one plus years and have done over 100 notarizations that's good any suggestions on ramping up the business okay the first thing you need to do is outline that in your profile. You need to outline the fact that you have done 100 signings in your profile. You need to make sure that all 100 of those signings are in snap docs. You need to put them in there, even though they may not have been snap doc orders. You need to put them in snap docs so that snap docs algorithm can see that you are actively doing loan closings. Because there are companies in that use Snap Docs that will actually look for people who have 80 signings or more, 100 signings or more, 150 or more. They look for people who have a certain number of signings. But if you never put your orders in there, you're like, well, I got, I know people that say, well, I got 150 that I've done. Well, how many you have, have you put them in a Snap Doc? No, Snap Docs only shows the five. And I'll never get nothing from it. Well, SnapDoc has an algorithm and it sees that you're not really doing anything within that platform. They're not going to give you any work. They're not. I got over 2,700, probably to close to 2,800 um, orders in my SnapDocs. And not all of them come 2,719. That's what I have. Um, That's what I have. And let me show you all that. 
y'all can see over here don't want y'all can't let y'all see all the people's personal information but 2719 orders that i've put into snap docs that's what i put into snap docs so the first thing is you need to get your profile straight your profile needs to show the world the notary world that you have been doing your thing um that's what you need to do because and the reason why because with snap docs this is what snap docs does In snap docs over here to the far right 1189 snap docs only shows your on your public profile the number of signings that you did through them so if you got way more you need to put that on there and the way i do it which i have to update this here i put it in my profile and say how many i have so i'm gonna update this to show 2719 and then i'm gonna say of you know completed this includes 1189 from snap docs so i'm letting the person know that basically darn near a little less than half of the orders that i've done have come from them even if it is general notary work and all that put it in there snap docs doesn't show them the type of work of your client from my understanding the people's information they just show that you've been doing work so if you put the work in there that feeds the algorithm for snap docs and you just put in there what you have done so you've done 20 loan closings okay put them in there it's a start it is a start there's some people there's some companies they have a low threshold and they're looking for somebody who's at least done 20 you show them and you put your stuff in there and like, okay, cool. We'll give them a shot. But if they see that you're doing work, because typically that's who gets hired. People who show that they are active out there. If you're not showing that you're active, they're not going to mess with you. Um, so ramping up the business also is taking orders that come to you. And I know a lot of people are highly opposed to anything less than 150. Some people are opposed to anything less than 100. And matter of fact, this is a good point to show y'all some stuff. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show y'all some things here. Let me do this. Um. all right do that and hold on let me okay and give me some questions y'all give me some questions because i need to set something up for y'all i need to set something up for y'all so that y'all and um let me do this here because i'm like i told you i wanted to do this um Uh, What's this here? Oh, okay. 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 So I'm I'm <clears throat> getting something set up for y'all to show y'all so y'all can understand the numbers, the numbers game here. Okay. Y'all really need to understand the numbers game here. Um, okay. All right. Um, Y'all really need to understand the numbers game. And like I said, I was trying to set this up earlier and I didn't um, get a chance to. And I'm going to show y'all something real, real, real quick. Still, y'all, this is going to help y'all understand the dollars here. Okay. Um, this is really going to help y'all understand what I'm talking about when it comes to the money. Um, okay. And this should be...
right. Hold on one second. And then this here is. And then this here is. All right, so. All right, so let me show y'all this real quick. I'm going to ask a question. How many of y'all remember the percentage that I said? I said the, a certain percentage that I make. I don't know how to put it. I said, the major, what is the percentage of orders that I make that I do of $100 or less? And I've said it many, many times that the bulk of my money comes from hundred dollars or less orders and i want y'all to answer the question and tell me what is the percent that i said i said a specific percent do anybody remember that if you remember it drop it in the um in the chat real quick i said the percent of money i make of a hundred dollars or less comes from you know that i'm the, the majority of the money i make is a hundred dollars or less and what is the percent of that Okay. Yeah, he's now Caprinus, he's a member, so he saw that. Um, he saw that and everything. Okay. All right, we got 70, we got 60. Okay. So And then okay. Uh, All right. I'm and I'm adding them up here. I'm putting them up here so y'all can see. Um and then that is so right now the person who okay two people have responded frank is is correct i said 60 i said 60 percent of the money um that i make comes from that okay so let me delete that out. Let me delete that out. Oops. Mm -hmm. I'm messing all this up. I am not good with Excel, y'all. <laughs> I am not good with Excel whatsoever. All right. So let me sh throw the numbers in here for y'all. Hopefully y'all can see this fairly good. Um, can only zoom. I'm a um take myself off here. So here's what you got. The $50 orders, I I didn't know. Um, I'll tell y'all about that later. But and y'all gonna excuse me on the on the scrolling. So these orders here, this is the orders. And this is as of like a week or so ago. I did $100 or less. 56% of the work that I'm doing, that I've done so far as of up to about a week ago, 56% of the money that I make comes from less than $100. I mean, $100 or less. Now, so y'all can get an idea out of, so you can see how many orders out of 696, well, actually, because of the spacing, about 694 orders come out to 64,997, okay? That's how much, as about a week ago, that I have done. Not that I've, you know, I'm still collecting money. So 64,000. So here's the thing. Out of 64,000, 56% of that 
are orders less than a uh, hundred dollars or less. 44% of that is orders. If you take out the hundred less than a hundred, 44% of my money comes from under a hundred dollars. If you add that in, if you say, well, how much do I get of a hundred dollars or more? 55% of that money. Money that is a hundred dollars, that is over a hundred dollars, meaning a hundred and one or more, is forty three percent. Now here's the kicker: people say I want one fifty or more. Okay, I want one fifty or more. So for this year, the hundred and fifty dollars or more comes out to a whopping seventeen thousand three forty. Now. The question is this, if you can live and take care of your family off of just that, then by all means, only do 150 or more. That's the numbers. So 28,000 for over 100, 35,000 for $100 or more, For under 100, meaning any orders under $199 or less, $29,000. And then for orders of $100 or less, $36,000. So now the question is, the question is, what amount of money is enough to take care of you? For me, I got to take everything that I can. And I know not everybody is in that situation where they, they can just say, okay, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Because you got 15 different businesses. You got other streams of income. You got your retirement. You got this. And I get that. But the one thing that no one should be doing is making anybody feel bad about doing it because they may have to do it. Okay. I'm going to get personal with y'all real quick. Okay. I'm going to get real personal with y'all. Several of y'all know that November 5th of last year, my pop passed away. And for two years, I was taking care of him. I wasn't able to really do the business in full. <clears throat> taking care of him was expensive. And when he passed away, that was just in the five grand a month taken out of the house because he was helping us with things because I couldn't go out there and really do the business. The time that I went full time in the business was right before, right after he came here, right after we brought, I brought him home, brought him here with me. Then I went full time in the business. So I was never able to really like just do the business full time, even though I was popping like 50, 60 signers a month, I really could have been doing 80 or 90 during the height of the pandemic, but I couldn't because I had to make sure pop was taken care of. I always had to come back home, couldn't be out too late, couldn't leave too early. I had to make sure that he was taken care of. Well, with my pop, he had certain expenses for his food and things of that nature. We had to make sure that was taken care of, make sure he had clothes and all that because the house was so dilapidated that we had to just leave him with everything. So when he came with us, he had no clothes, he had a lot of his souvenirs and things of that nature family pictures and stuff, but he had no clothes. So I had to buy him a whole new wardrobe. I had to buy a bed, everything. And for the first year, I didn't ask him for any money. Just let his money sit, this, that, and the other. But he saw I was struggling. He saw that, you know, he, he said, son, let me help you out. I said, okay, pop. Then we had to get a whole new AC system put in <clears throat> in order for him to be comfortable because he lived over the, groom, the um, garage. And the garage got really cold and he don't like the cold. He's never cared for the cold. And that's how I am. <laughs> so I bought a, had to and get a, a whole new AC system installed in order to um, keep the garage. So it was like one of those mini split systems that just kept the garage cool. And it also heated it. So cool and heated whenever we need to. Well, when he passed, that money was gone. That was from his retirement, Social Security, 
and he was gracious enough to bless us and help us out with, you know, taking care of utilities, all that kind of stuff. But I still got to pay for that $15,000 unit, you know, that we had for him. And we had no indication that he was going to pass. I got to take every daggone thing. Okay. So y'all need to, I, mean, I want y'all to understand this. When you, when you lose, I would say $2,000 or more of revenue or any kind of income in your household, you ain't got time to be nitpicking and, and, and flip flopping back and forth about a $60 order versus 150 and all of that. If that money that you're making is helping you in your bottom line, whatever your bottom line is, with that going, you got to take it. You got to do what you got to do. And that's all I'm trying to encourage y'all to do. And I get that some people out there feel that doing certain orders or certain dollar amounts is beneath them. Certain orders that require them to do certain things is beneath them. I get that. But daggone, you have a responsibility to take care of yourself. And if you didn't have your other stuff, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be talking smack. You wouldn't be sitting here just passing up work because of your own personal pride. And that's one of the things that's happening right now is that a lot of people are sitting here constantly making business decisions off of their personal pride. Stop making business decisions of what you're not going to do because of your personal pride, because it doesn't give you bragging points on social media, because it's not something for you to be able to brag about. What I like bragging to myself about, not publicly beyond, is the fact that I'm making money to take care of my family. I don't have certain financial resources that other people have, and I'm cool with that. I understand. But I do have the ability to go out here and work. And if I can't go out here and work and take care of my family, something's wrong. As a man, not trying to be a man, as a man, I have an obligation in a, in a thing. And I will say this here. The main people who I've always had concern with issues or who had issues with me have been the ladies. I get more pushback. And some of the ladies, I understand. We've had conversations. I'm cool with them. I, I get their, their point of view. But not everybody is in that position that they're in. They're in a position that they can forego a $60 order or anything under $150, $125, 100 they can forego those. They're just like, I ain't doing those. Got it. But there are human beings out here that can't. And there's no definitive proof outside of a few signing companies that say, well, we're only paying people this because that's what they want to get paid. Nobody definitively wants to get, get paid $60. If they can get $100, they will take it. But as you saw with the interview that I did with Marcy, there are companies out here that this is all we're going to pay you. It ain't about the fact that notaries are saying, I want to get paid this dollar amount. If that's all you're offering, okay, I'll roll with it. Because here's the thing, and I've said this before, if you got five notaries, three of them will say, okay, I'm cool with 60. The other two say I'm not, and they can do the work. Then why not pay them what they want to get paid? If you have the money, because when you say, in my opinion, well, I'm paying 60 because that's what they say they want. Well, it tells me that you may be able to pay more. And if you can pay more and somebody wants the more, then why not pay them that? Why hold me to a lesser standard? OK, and I'm not saying doing 60 is a lesser. Standard, but if, you know, somebody might look at it that way. So if I have the ability to do the job. And you know I can do it well at a hundred. Then pay me the hundred. Why say, well, I'm only pay you this because other people? Nah, that's like you, you just because all the other front desk receptionists want to get paid twelve dollars. Now I want twenty five, and I can show you that I'm worth twenty five, and you see I'm worth twenty five. So then pay me twenty five, and I get what people are saying, and I understand the concept. But a lot of that is coming from the companies. You, you know, when you got people desperate. <laughs> so I'm in a situation where 60% of my money 
really 44% of my money is coming from orders less than 100. So let's use 100. You're talking about giving up $29,000 a year. I can't I can't do that. I can't give up $29,000 a year. And and I'm not out here hurting people. I'm not slowing. I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not. I I can't. I just can't see myself doing that. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that kind of talk because it's like, well, 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 you're making it making it hard for us. How am I making it hard? How is anybody making it hard? Because here's the thing. There are certain signing companies that don't operate in my area. So if the signing company that's paying you six, that only wants to pay you 60 over in your area doesn't operate over here, then how can you say that I'm causing that problem for you? I'm not. My man Caprina says, also Griff, the majority of individuals in this industry pass up money waiting on orders that never come. Yeah. You're waiting on orders that never come. You saw. $17,000 $17,000 in orders of 150 or more that I was able to capture. Were there more? Yes, but I was only able to capture $17,000 worth. The question then becomes, how do you catch more? How do you get more to come to you? That's the big thing. I don't understand why any notary would pass up on orders or a client if they know how to do the loan package. That's just you know just weird to me. Part of the reason why is because this is they've been sold that you're supposed to be making this amount of money. You're supposed to be paid on this because, you know, people say, well, my customer service. I was talking, sharing, talking with a wonderful, wonderful lady and she's going to do good in this business. She really is. <clears throat> and she has said this as well as others. Well, pay me more because of, you know, I'm providing great customer service. OK, well, you should do that. When you think about what we're doing here, at the end of the whole process of the loan closing is the notary. Everybody else has done all the hard work and all we have to do is just walk in, sign, stamp, and we're done. And you want somebody to pay you $200 to just walk in, sign, stamp, and be done. Some people don't see it that way. Some people do. Because it's all on how they value what you bring to the table. If they don't feel what you bring to the table is worth $200, they're not going to pay you $200. But they say, I can consistently give you $95, and I can probably give you $5,000 worth of $95 orders each and every month. Will you accept? Now the question becomes, from a business standpoint, do you forego the $5,000? Not the $95. But the five thousand, because they're saying I can give you five thousand dollars worth of business. So what does that come out to? Five thousand divided by ninety-five, fifty-two signings a month. Now the question becomes: Are you willing to do fifty-two closings a month? If you are willing to do fifty-two closings a month, boom. So fifty-two divided. So you're talking about two a day. And that's divided by 20. And the reason why I use 20, because Monday through Friday, five days times four weeks is 20, 20 work days. So Monday through Friday, you're doing 20 work days a, a week. I mean, a month. And you're actually doing two signings a day. So now you got two signings per day at $95 to pull in five grand. And you have the rest of the day to do other notary stuff whether other closings or general notary work or whatever but you know every day and they say every day we got closings um we have two closings every day we're going to do at 10 o'clock and one o'clock and you go in there and knock those out and then once you've done it your one o'clock one you're free to go do whatever you want you got the weekend you got the evenings you got all of that 
So you tell me if that opportunity came to you, why would you pass it up from a business standpoint? Personally, no, I wouldn't pass it up because that's a solid lot, $5,000. So now I got $5,000 that's coming in, you know, every month. That right there. That's my six. That's sixty thousand dollars. I just increased my net worth by sixty thousand dollars, and that's not even counting anything else that comes through. Now let's just say you can do another five thousand dollars in notary business. Now you're talking about a hundred. Now you're talking about ten thousand dollars a month. Now you're talking about one hundred and twenty k a year. You see how it works? You can't get close to 10 if you ain't at the five. The five puts you closer to 10. It's a lot easier to get to 10 if you're already at five. And I'm just giving this as a scenario. So me making the money that I'm making I'm closer to the 10 than if I didn't take all the orders that I took. That's where we're at. Now, help me understand. What, what do y'all think about what I'm sharing here? I really want to see. I know y'all listening to me and everything and digesting it and trying to see how this fits in your life and all of that. Probably comparing it to stuff that you heard out here from other people and all of that. But let's just get real. People are overthinking the notary fees, not realizing that some of these companies, this is all they can pay you. This is all they're going to pay you. But how can you actually use that to your advantage? But you're underperforming because you're overthinking. Why aren't you paying me 150? Look at how much money I spent to get in the business. And again, person after person who I talk to tell me the same thing. I spent all this money to get in the business. I bought all of this stuff. I've done all of this. I've taken all of this training. I deserve to get paid 125, 150. Because of what I did to get prepared to do this. And then the question becomes, did anybody tell you that you needed to do that? And it and is the person who told you somebody that's paying you because you did it? Or is the person who's telling you to do it is the person who you paid to do it? Hmm? Who told you to do this? Is it? The person who you're paying, or is it the person who paid you? That's the question. You spent all this money to do this business. Who told you to do that? Because if the person who is paying you told you to do that, that's one thing. But if the person who is not paying you meaning you're paying them for it to be told to do this. That's a different thing. That's a different thing altogether. It says, I wholeheartedly agree, girl. If I can do the signing, works around my schedule, I usually take it. Look, that's all I'm doing. I had two signings today that was, one was 34, 32 pages and one was 27. 32 page one was $35. The 27 one was $70. Then I had a 140 some page one that was $70. Then I had one that was 114 pages that was 120, that was 150. Altogether, I made 300 and something dollars today. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that because my minimum, and again, I always talk to y'all about goals. My Daily goal is no min is a minimum of three hundred dollars, whether it's through you know the loan closings or just the notary work <clears throat> in conjunction with um house inspections and anything else I'm doing. Three hundred dollars a day. That's what I'm trying to make. And so y'all can understand the numbers. So. Three hundred dollars a day times the twenty dot the twenty work days, Monday through Friday, five Monday through Friday, three more times. That's twenty. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty times twenty. 
is six thousand. That's my minimum. Minimum dollar amount. Of course, I can do more, less, all of that. My ideal is five hundred dollars a day times twenty. Oops. Five hundred dollars times twenty. Ten thousand. That's what my that will be ideal for me. Right now, my my intermediate goal is to do four hundred dollars a day times twenty, which would give me eight thousand. See, if you don't have a monthly goal, and you're just sitting here talking, about, I want one fifty. Okay, so you get one fifty, and you get one fifty times five times. That's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Can you sit there and brag online that? You get paid $150 for every signing you do? Yes, you can. But did you get paid enough to take care of your light bill and your uh, mortgage or rent and your car note and to put gas in your car and food on your table? That's the question. $150 don't do anything for you. $150 does nothing for you. $6,000 does a whole lot more for you and the 150. This is the thing that you got to understand. The $150 doesn't do anything for you by itself. It needs more of little buddies to pull together to do something financially for you. But the 6,000, the 8,000, the 10,000 does a whole lot more for you and your family. If you can focus on growing your business to make that money, part of what my man asked earlier, clone, um, clone media, I forgot the middle part of your name. That is where you're scaling your business. Scale your business so that you can start making $10,000 a month by actually doing the work. A lot of people, not, I just want to get $150 and you're happy with that. Okay, cool. But how many bills are you getting paid off with that? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. So that 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 seventeen thousand divided by twelve comes out to only fourteen hundred a month. Fourteen hundred a month by me doing those hundred and fifty dollars to three hundred dollar orders. Y'all know doggone well that ain't nothing for y'all to live off of. That that y'all y'all not gonna live off of that. And and that fourteen hundred, that fourteen hundred dollars divided by one fifty comes out to nine closings a month. So nine closings a month. This is why I do the numbers so you can see. Because a lot of y'all not playing with the numbers. Y'all yelling out numbers, but you're not actually working the numbers. You're not working the numbers. You're just sitting there having all kind of little hissy fits about what you're not getting, but not understanding how to work the numbers to get what you need to get. You're not working the numbers to get what you need to get, but you're fussing about what you're not getting and you end up with nothing. So I'm looking at this and saying, how do I get to where I want to go? I want this dollar amount. What can I do? How can I work the system to get to where I need to be? That's all I'm trying to do. And all and it all works together. The 100, the 50, all of it. 200, all of it works together for what my end goal is. And until you get an end goal of what dollar amount you're trying to make and get focused on doing that and realizing that every dollar you make each and every day as a business owner puts you closer to that goal. See, you want $150 per signing. What are you doing incrementally 
that helps you toward that 150. It's either all or none. The 150 is an all or none. But the 6,000 can be broken up into smaller pieces. I can do one. I can do. So if I take that 6,000 and let's just say I do that 6,000 and I divide that by four. So that's 1,500 a week. Okay. That and let me let me pull it let me pull it up so y'all can see. So that's fifteen hundred a week. Okay, so fifteen hundred a week divided by five, divided by five because five days in a week. So that's three hundred dollars a day. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you're saying that I still want the one fifty, that means you got to do two closings a day at one fifty. Are you are you in an area that can do that? But if you sit there and you have an opportunity to do an 85 plus a 65, which just gave you 150, okay, plus a 95, now you're at 245, plus, let's just say, a $45 loan app, now you just $10 away. And then somebody says, well, we have this $50 HELOC. Now you're at 340. The question is, are you willing to do that level of work? If you're willing to do that level of work, you go for it, you do it, and you be happy, and you done made your money. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Tell me what you think. I mean, if am I if I'm wrong in this, and see, I'm willing to put it out there on a the line like this have all of us think about this and to decide whether or not, okay, is this really the way it can work? Is this really the way it does work? Okay, Griff, you're way off your rocker. Because see, I'm willing to correct anything. I'm willing to retract everything that I just said, if you can show me where I'm incorrect at and how just focusing on $150 per signing helps you to your bottom line goal. But to be honest, for many of you, your bottom line goal is 150. That's what you're shooting for. I'm shooting for 150. That's what a lot of you got. 150 a bus. But all these other orders that you see coming in can get you to six, seven grand. But because they don't look the way you think they should look, because they don't sound the way they should look. Yeah, we're going to give you this and it's going to be just Five minutes from your house. It's only going to be three pages. All of that matters. All of those little things because it doesn't have the right aesthetics to what you think it should have because somebody told you your order should look like this. <clears throat> your order should be no more than that because they told you that. They said your order should look like this. It should be more, no more than that. You're like, okay, cool. That's what you're looking for. I don't see it. I don't see it. But what you do see, and you're overlooking it's six, seven thousand dollars worth of revenue each and every month. And you can't blame anybody but yourself. That's not a me problem. That's not any of these other trainers' problem. Well, it probably came from them, but you chose to believe it, you chose to execute that in your life, and now you got to live with your decision. So now the question is, what decision are you going to make going forward? If I'm even halfway right, what decision are you going to make? Present what I'm saying to your notary trainer. And see what they say. And see, this is a conversation that a lot of people don't like to hear. That's why a lot of folks dropping out. I know y'all want the juicy Griff going off and all this, that, and the other. <laughs> this is about you getting to where you said you want to be because this is why you came in this business. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Ain't got nothing to do with a trainer out there. You said you wanted to do this, so go make it happen. That's it. So, my man said, if we... If we were to break down your sign is over two years, I'm sure my my signs are under hundred dollars would probably be eighty five percent. However, 
I still get 350 plus signers. 350 signers a year. That sounds like that's what you're saying. You're getting 350 plus signings a year. Yeah, and I'm getting just around 700 signings a year, and I'm averaging $92 per signing this year. Mine is down. Last year was about 110. So last year I was doing about 110 per signing. This year, okay, over two years. So 350 over two years. So I'm really busting about, yeah, $92 per signing. I got it. I got it. That's why I do my house inspections. That's why I do some other stuff to make up the slack, to keep me from having to go back to that W-2 work because I'm not, it's it's just not ready. I'm not, my body wouldn't, uh-uh. My body, my mind, my my calves, my ankles, my my left shoulder <laughs> would cannot handle going back into that environment. If I had to, I would, but I'm doing everything I can to not go back there which requires sacrifice, which requires sometimes late nights and early mornings, which requires me to pump and push out there for 8, 10, 12, 15 hours in a day. But the benefit that I get far outweighs any tiredness I feel. And that's the key. The benefit that I get out of working the way that I work for myself far outweighs any tiredness that I feel. Because if I don't work the way I'm working and I let the tiredness overcome and take me, then next thing you know, I'm going to be running back to a W-2 to get relief. And I don't want a W-2 to provide me with any kind of relief. I'll find a relief on my own. I like that. That was a good one there. But y'all quiet tonight. Y'all quiet. Either I am actually really making y'all think and give me some questions. I mean, really tell me what y'all think, y'all. Does this make any sense? I know Caprinus hits me up with it, you know, with his thoughts. But seriously, what do y'all think? I mean, Like they said, you got to stand 10 toes down and own your, your own decision. And here's the last thing that I can say on this here. Maybe the last thing. Whatever dollar amount you are afraid to take, and for some of you, it's, it's about fear. Whatever dollar amount you are afraid to take, just know that it doesn't have to last forever. Me making $92 on average for a signing, it's not going to be forever. I know that, but I'm going to go out here and I'm going to work what I can and look for ways to change it. And every time I do an order, I'm getting more and more experience. I'm coming across more and more people, other folk that got other opportunities to present to me, real estate agents who enjoy working with me, real estate investors, signing companies, title companies. I mean, during this time, this year, I've actually gained three directs. Where I, when I came into this year, I only had one. I got four now. And this is in a down market. So by me staying with it and working, and so many notaries getting out and so many notaries saying, I'm going to just sell classes now. Okay, you sell your class. I'm going to do a signing company. You do your signing company because guess what? You got to come to grips. And some of those people get desperate enough to where they're like, okay, man, I'll pay you $100 to do this. And I've had people tell me, you know what? I'm not even going to try to make any money on this. Just get the job done. I'm going to pay you my whole fee. Okay. And I go out there and knock it out the ballpark. And now I got a now I got a client for life because they're like, okay, Griff was there for us. Griff was there. He he was there when we needed him to be. And I did that. And then they tell their friends. And their friends are like, hey, uh, so and so told us you can do a good job and you did that. Yeah, I got you covered. That's what this is all about. 
that is more valuable than any $150 single signing that I could ever get. A group of people who believe in me, who have confidence in me, who trust me, that is worth more than any $150 signing that any of these little jokesters out here that call themselves some kind of notary trainer educator could ever tell me. That matters more. That matters more. <laughs> and Frank said, I've been following this thinking for the last 60 years and it's served him well. That's where we're at, party people. I knew this was going to be a more somber one tonight. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear this kind of conversation and talk because many of you are married to what you paid for from that notary trainer. The hype and the lofty expectations of this business, you paid for it. And you got it and you're married to it and you're not willing to let it go whatsoever. You're not willing to let it go. You want to keep it infinitum. Keep it there. Why are you holding on to that fairy tale? And you realize that only barely 1% of the people who hear that same fairy tale as you are actually living it. You go ahead and hold on to it. But in reality world, there's six, seven, eight thousand dollars worth of work you can be pulling in if you're willing to do it. If you're not, if you think you're something special, if you think you are above whatever, be above it in your own mind. But out here in the reality world, not everybody can be there. It's going to only be a small percentage of you. Only a small percentage. Only. The vast majority of notaries out here. And see, what I was going to talk about, and I'm going to end it on this. I was going to talk about, maybe next Friday was, has the mentoring that you pay for actually work from these people? Now, people who you call on me, like I had a lady, she, um, one of the members, she's like, hey, Griff, I need a document review. Boom, no problem. I got you covered. People know that they, they need to talk to me. I'm there for them. I don't ghost anybody in any of that. Do a lot of people call me? No. They don't take advantage of it. They're, I got YouTube channel members. They don't all take advantage of it. Some of them, they probably just, they're like, nah, I'm, I'm going to be good. And they, I'm like, all right, cool. But if you need me, I'm here. But this paid mentorship that you're paying with these other people out here and this other stuff. Has it really helped you to get the $10,000 a month? And I would say simply this. If it had, you wouldn't be here. Because you'd be more busy doing that than listening to me. So it's safe to say that it probably hasn't gotten you to where you need to be. And I'm going to leave it at that. My man said the truth, <laughs> the truth hurts, but the gospel from <laughs> Griff is a fact jack i appreciate that man i appreciate that and like i said i'm willing to come out and just share what i feel and think because if i'm incorrect and somebody can correct me and point me in the right direction then that means we can all be pointed in the right direction but if what i'm saying is just even halfway true then let's roll with it see what happens because the other stuff you're doing ain't working why not try this and if it works a little bit and you start making some i think that's a plus all right well y'all have a good one thank you very much for your time i really greatly appreciate it talk to y'all later and i'll see y'all of course next friday for another fritter friday but I'll be doing other videos in between. Talk to y'all later. Peace.